What's up, guys? I'm Tyler. And I'm Brittany. We're back at you again at the Wallace Farm and Sawmill with a new video on Monday. Today, we're going to do something that needs to be done. We've hit that 100 hour mark. Got to take care of a few maintenance items on the sawmill. We'll turn this camera around, show you what we got going on. Check it out. Let's get this oil changed. We're gonna start by warming up the engine. I've already done that off of camera. We're gonna now take and loosen this. I pre-loosened this a moment ago. I've got my oil pan below and I'm going to try to get no oil on myself here. Um, sort of successful, a little bit on the tip there. Now we're gonna wait a few minutes and let that drain. And we're also going to take care of a lot of other maintenance items on the sawmill while we're at it. While that's draining, I would like to go ahead and say this sawmill is new. We've got like 150 hours on it now. And we want to take care of it. So I'm pretty much sticking to 100 hour intervals on my oil change. Pretty sure that's what it calls for. But even if not, every 100 hours, I can change the oil in it. So uh, I noticed the oil was getting a little dark and I decided... Yeah, it's time. So I keep it on a 100 hour interval, something I've stuck with pretty much since I've had my wood miser uh, sawmills through the years. And it's uh, seemed to serve me well. Um, keeping clean oil and fresh air filter and lubing everything that needs to be lubed is always a good thing. Talk with some of the guys at wood miser through time and a lot of people are, you guys in the comments argue this one below. Can you over grease? Okay, so like you got like 10 different grease points. Oh, grease on my nose. You got grease on your nose. <laughs> There's like 10 different grease points on the sawmill bed area. I will go over those in a moment. We'll count them. But uh, Justin over at Woodmiser in Georgia told me, don't grease as much as you think. You don't have to. And uh, I'll turn around and show you one of them. Hope that I'm not horribly misquoting him here, but he said this thing here was like, he's never really had a grease issue with one. So, like, just make sure you hit that thing every 25, 50 hours, something like that. Not a big deal. Just make sure you give it a shot every now and then. And all the other ones, I think, you probably could go, if you saw actively, probably every week and a half, two weeks. But we can start a war in the comments below about how often we should or shouldn't be greasing. But I do think that everything on this bed, I will note, moves slow. And not as often as you think. I mean, you stand the back stops up once or so every per log and they go down as the log goes down so it's not a lot of movement there we just make sure they're lubed so i take care of mine like every couple weeks you know reshoot them with some grease and she's draining right down into here and into there got one of these that uh i don't remember if i got that one at walmart yeah i got that one at walmart but those are really nice to have because with a little filth the funnel the vent and the pour i usually get my gallons of oil and i uh let this build up i save all the cans and then i'm able to take those one gallon cans and pour them back in and in a means of storage and disposal all right let's start counting grease fittings as we go around the mill we're gonna have three here and three on the other arm so there's six to start off with let's get these taken care of Always wipe the tops off. Oh, 
All right, number seven coming in right here. Another one that doesn't move very often because these don't move a ton. Okay, so now we got to get to these. I'm about to pick these up real quick so we can get to them. So here comes number eight. Right now, number nine. Now these, I don't have, these are um, the manual ones. I don't have, the only automated are the first and the last. The two middle ones for shorter stuff for manual. I'm not going to grease them right now because I literally never use them. So I don't saw short stuff. They stay down in this position 24 seven. But, uh, see that would have been eight and nine. That'd be 10 and 11. Here's number 12. Ran out quick. Number 13. Okay. I don't, let me feel down here. Okay. Get this one right here. This would be number 14. Okay, 15, 16, again, that's the manual. We don't use those ever. Um, so this would be 17 and 18 right here. Let's see. Um, I know this guy here will be 19. Okay. okay, number 20 right here. Uh, this was one I was told that keep it greased pretty good. Don't overlook it. Okay. Okay, so now we got to put the cap back on the oil. Brittany's going to tighten that up. And the next step, guys, will be to, I guess we need to pull that oil filter. I like the gravity drain on that to where the oil filter is upright and the oil is, is going to be out of it. You don't have to worry about making too big of a mess there. Pretty nice, but that'll be our next step. Pull that little oil filter off. And we'll put the new oil filter on, and then we'll fill it with oil. Oil filter didn't want to give up, so I had to put the wrench on it. I think it went on a little too tight last time. Definitely went on too tight. There she be. Put that drain into there. Put a little fresh oil around the seal. Should be good. Going for the old no funnel. Let's see if we can get it in there without spilling. They got it in a really nice angle here, so usually you can. Pretty open. Go ahead and set the neck over in there a little bit. Won't spill a drop. this one in. We're going to check it. I can't remember if this thing's two or three quart. It's the 38 EFI engine. Ah, dang it. That didn't. It spilled a little. <laughs> I'll get that up in a minute so it don't make a mess. So now that we filled the oil, next thing we got to do, we're going to take the dipstick, wipe it clean, 
we're gonna check our level. If you can see here, we have a full and a low. We need to be somewhere in between. Ease that out of there. And as you can see, we're right up near the full mark. So that's gonna be good to go. Back into there, make sure it's fully seated. We'll crank it up, warm it up, and then we will check it one final time just as a procedure there. And I know you guys are thinking, okay, you're done maintenance in your sawmill. Nope, we got more to go. We gotta get all these chains lubricated with ATF, automatic transmission fluid. So now let's move to that. I'm gonna go ahead and move the head up to its highest position. We're gonna take care of this chain right here first. So I'm just trying to expose as much chain as possible. Off the get go here. Which right about there we're getting towards the stopping point. So I learned this one from a couple guys over at Woodmiser. Um, ATF on these chains, I just use a rag behind. I got a spray bottle with ATF in it and I just lightly hit these and work them in. I don't try to leave no excess, but uh, just to get them coated here. I have seen in videos that I watch on YouTube, I've seen people develop rust and kinks can get in here where these are rusted. I believe that by doing this, you may could help prevent that, you know, from, from them getting rusted and trying to bend or kink one way or the other. And if you use this rag, you don't make too big of a mess. You keep your excess up and just lightly spray to your dry spots. And then I'll take a dry rag in a moment and wipe it up anywhere it gets on the mill or anything, which this ATF is not too bad on anything anyway. So we got this chain. We're gonna move the head all the way to the lowest position now. We're gonna go over the top and get the uh, upper portion of it. Take it down to the lowest position. Through here, start down here. Be careful, try not to make a mess with it. I'm trying to coat everything too. Getting around this muffler situation. I think some probably even neglect to do this on these chains, just based off what I've seen. I've seen some that looked really rusted and really um, neglected. Now, I'm not making this up, guys, with ATF. You can call your wood miser, whichever one you use, your local one, and they're gonna tell you ATF all your chains, your rub rails, which that's where we're headed as soon as I get to this chain. This chain fixed up. Same scenario, different chain. We gotta get through here and make sure we lubricate this chain all the way down. A little tight in here where the little pad is. This pad's where it connects to your electronics so you can only use the electronics when your head's in the backwards position here. Um, or when your head's all the way back, that is. So I'm just gonna Lubricate this chain. Again, what this does is prevents rust, kinking, binding. So that's the reason for it. And then we gotta take care of this rub rail next. So let's get this chain done, then I'm gonna reconvene right here at this rail. Now my rag from going through all these chains is really oiled up. So I'm just gonna take it and wipe 
the top of this rail off and keep it clean and lubricated. There's a bottom rail too here, same thing. Okay, so that's pretty much the full maintenance on there. If there's any other small details, I'm sure I'm missing out on something, but that's our general maintenance on a 100 hours for us. So anything you want to add to that, put in the comments below and tell us what you think we ought to look into. But that's uh, that's what I do to maintain this thing. So we've got a few other tasks we're going to do around the sawmill today. I'll probably catch a few random clips of that and add them in the video as well. It's just a Monday at the meal, and I wanted to start the week off right and get this maintenance done. Just like that, we're winding the day down. If you look behind me, you can see that garage. It's actually been stick framed and one side has been sided. I did that this afternoon while Miss Brittany ran the sawmill and she cut 200 pallet stringers while I did that wall right there. So multitasking, getting things done on a Monday. Yeah. So that's going to wind the video up though. This video is mainly about that maintenance on the sawmill. Guys, keeping up with your maintenance on all of your equipment. Extremely important in my opinion, and I'm sure a lot of you will see that the same way. You got to take care of it so that it lasts you for a long time. What do you want to add to this, Miss Brittany? If you're not subscribed to our Patreon, you're missing out. And don't forget about our hats and our other merchandise. Take it hey, off. Hey, mine's not as dirty as yours. Hey, yours is cleaner. <laughs> okay, so we got the hats. Check the links below. There'll be a link to the Patreon, link to the Etsy shop for the hats. If you're interested in one of those, we shipped out two this morning. And yeah, that's going to do it. Until next time, guys. See ya. Bam.